next experiment that you will perform is experiment number five that is impulse switchdown and flashover test on porcelain pin insulator after the this theory class you will get the instruction sheet and also this ppt so that it will uh, be uh, kept as a reference to you when you do the class now the objective of this experiment is to carry out the impulse voltage withstand test on 11 kV pin insulator as per IS731 that in high voltage laboratory what we do we follow the different type of Indian standards so that these testings are just not only laboratory testing it is also done in commercial testing laboratory so that you understand the actual and practical testing process used in commercial systems now to determine the 50 percent dry impulse flashover voltage on 11 kv pin insulator as per i731 so what are these two first we will do we will determine what will be the withstand voltage of 11 kv pin insulator we will apply impulse voltage to 11 kV pin insulator. Then we will apply the uh, increase the voltage and determine the 50% flashover voltage. That means if you give two impulse at a particular voltage, insulator will break down or you, if you give four impulse, insulator will break down twice and will withstand twice. That is the 50% flashover voltage. So with these objectives, there will be uh, some recap of high voltage lightning impulse voltage generator because you have studied the impulse generator in detail in the first semester this recapitulation is needed otherwise you cannot you will forget you have already forgot to calibrate the impulse generator the basic things are the dc charging section that you can see the generation stage multiplier section and the output stage charging section charges a capacitor bank generation stage is this capacitor bank which is charged at a particular voltage and gives the impulse by firing the sphere gap and the output there are certain resistance capacitance network so that the output stage the web can be controlled according to the Indian standard I hope that you know that what is this standard that 1.2 is the front time and uh, 50 microsecond is the tail time of the impulse web shape. Now, if you see just a recapitulation in control panel, there are main controls that the DC meter, trigger switch, variac, and gap setting. These are needed for the impulse generator to operate. DC meter determines at what voltage the capacitor will be charged. Trigger will fire the sphere gap of the impulse generator so that impulse output can be achieved. Gap increase and decrease makes the sphere gap in a particular position so that the trigger can operate. If you have too big gap, trigger will have no effect. If you have too small gap, the sphere will fire at much lower voltage. And this variac is used to control the DC charging voltage of the 
capacitor how it is done the dc charging stage as you have already seen it is the cockcroft walton voltage doubler and there are two diodes first d2 is off d1 conducts cap capacitor charges to vm and when d2 conducts and d1 is off if this vm is in series with this vm sin omega t so that this peak and the capacitor voltage adds up and twice the v peak appears at the output and charges the capacitor c2 in this way voltage doubling takes place this is the practical circuit because since it is a diode you can get both polarity of dc voltage positive and negative with respect to this ground so diode can be reversed by this mechanical switch you will see in the laboratory and the pmmc meter that i have already shown you this meter dc meter indicates the amount of voltage that is given to the multiplier stage this is the thing that this is the series resistance series capacitance that high voltage transformer this is the variac where is the variac variac is in the control panel here then there is the high voltage transformer here is the high voltage transformer you will see in the laboratory c and r you can see that the c and r is given here and these two diodes d1 d2 and the switches these these uh, rod type structures are the diodes one is here and another is here and these rods are switches mechanical switches this can be shifted so that the diode polarity can be reversed this is the dc charging stage you will see in the laboratory and next comes the multiplier stage this is the complicated arrangement of capacitors but before that let us understand how it can be multiplied suppose the capacitors are charged in parallel at same voltage if this sphere fires then the positive of this capacitor is connected with the help of this spark the negative of the another capacitor so that the voltage voltages adds up and two vdc appears at the output so if i connect more and more capacitors all will be charged in capacity uh, parallel and the output will be added up one after the other in this way multiplier section works multiplier can have all capacitors in parallel and the input voltage since it is 175 kv dc so that if all capacitors are in parallel v out is 175 kv four capacitors in parallel two sets in series then if v in into 2 350 kv peak two capacitors in parallel four sets in series v out is 700 kv peak and all eight capacitors in series is v in into 8 1400 kv peak these are four settings if you charge at full 175 kv all the capacitors if you charge at 50% output will be reduced this will be now 70 700 kv peak so this is the function of multiplier section these are the capacitors charging and discharging resistors sphere gaps are there several sphere gaps multiplier work in this way web shaping section how it works the output is somewhat a square type pulse now it is the output here is passing through this low pass filter r d and c b so that the front time is delayed and it gets a shape and for the tail time this c b discharges through r d and r e 
so that the out the tail time is longer because this time constant obviously is more because this register adds up to rd in this way by adjusting rd and re mechanically it is not adjusted with the help of any switch mechanically the re these resistances are changed so that one time you will get 1.2 as front time and 50 microsecond as tail time this is the cb this is R re and the small resistances the yellow color at the rd here it is not uh, shown but if you hang this rd it will be connected to cb now measuring sphere we have 25 centimeter diameter sphere with 1.4 centimeter gap to measure or calibrate the impulse generator these are all done just i am uh, repeating so that you remember how to calibrate with the help of IS 1876. So 25 kilo, uh, centimeter diameter and 1.4 centimeter gap gives 42.9 kV peak at STP. But what is done? All 10 times the sphere is not fired. A voltage is found out with the help of variac and DC charging meter so that that voltage when applied 10 times the firing is 50%. Why? Just recapitulation if you see for 1.2 microsecond peak of the impulse front time it matches through V50 that means 50% flashover and the S curve gives that 40, 50, 60 almost coincides so that what happens? You can give 40 to 60 percent uh, 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 flashover of the sphere gap so that it comes under V50. Suppose you give 10 shots. It is very much possible that exactly five shots fire, five shots don't fire. It is possible. But if you give 500 shot, is it possible that exactly 500 will be fired and 500 will miss? Impossible. And that is why this S curve is given that if you have 400 to 600 times firing, it will come under V50. This tolerance is very much required. So, 4 to 6 times can be fired. So, we are going to find out a voltage where the sphere will fire 4 to 6 times. But again, the value is at STP, totally different from lab conditions. What happens? Corrections are needed. Now, I will go to the system, how the laboratory experimental setup is done and how the corrections are done. Here, since you are going to test the insulator or the withstand voltage, this insulator has to be connected to the impulse generator. But if you see in the left figure, there is the transmission line and transmission lines are perpendicular to the cross arm of the post if you see here is it visible anyone yes sir okay okay this thing is exactly simulated here this transmission line one meter and one meter is on the both side of the insulator which simulates the long transmission line Conductor is perpendicular to this cross arm, this cross arm. And the height is at least one meter from ground so that it is similar to the actual transmission line. This 
whole arrangement is simulating or emulating the transmission line where 11 kV pin insulator is connected. Now procedure of calibration, adjust the variac, fire 10 times and read the meter. Say at 25 kilo volt DC, if you fire, there may be, suppose at 25 kV, three times the sphere fires. Which sphere? This sphere is connected. I will show you again this sphere. This sphere is connected. How it is connected? It is connected with the impulse generator. See here, this cross arm etc. is connected to the output and this measuring sphere is also connected. Both are connected because you are simulating the exact transmission system. So everything should be connected. Say at 25 kV, this sphere fires two times. Then it is not done. You increase to 26 kV, it fires three times, not done. Then you increase to 27 kV, then it fires four times. Four times is correct because four to six is all right. So you go on increasing the voltage. At a fixed voltage, give 10 shots. When this 10 shots produce four to six time breakdown in this sphere gap, your system is calibrated. How it is calibrated? See, this is the DC meter and this is the adjustment of variac. Okay. I will directly go to the correction. These are the correction formulas needed. U0 equal to U by delta into K. K is this formula and delta is this formula. I think already you have come across this formula several times. And this dry and wet bulb thermometer, you will get the reading. Aneroid barometer is there to read the pressure. And IS 731 will give you the absolute humidity from dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. An example is given 42.9 kV at STP. We will find out delta. We will find out H, K, and putting this value 42.9 kV becomes 42.8 kV peak. This is in the lab condition. This means at lab condition for one centimeter gap, if 50% breakdown occurs in the sphere gap due to impulse, the peak of the impulse will be at 42.8 kV peak instead of 42.9. 42.9 would be the peak when it is at STP, but in that condition, it will be 42.8 kV peak. Now observation, we will observe the peak and cross sequence, how much it fires. It should fire at least four times. See, four ticks are there. Three ticks will not do. Seven ticks will not do. It should be only four to six times. Now calculations. Say it fires four to six times at 26 kV DC. Then 26 kV DC is equivalent to 42.8 kV peak. Because 42.8 kV is after correction. You will find your own connection fa correction factors. So the cali calibration is this is important. 1 kV DC equivalent to 1.64 kV peak impulse. Just unitary method. This multiplication factor will be used in the subsequent step. So the first part of IS, there will be two IS. The calibration will be according to IS 1876. But the actual experiment will be according to IS 731. This you remember, don't forget it. So the calibration will be according to IS 1876 and this is done. 1 kV DC equivalent to 
x y z kv of impulse this is the first step you will have to find it out next at 11 kv pin insulator if you see is 731 highest system voltage is 12 kv and the flashover will be at uh, sorry withstand voltage impulse voltage withstand will be at 75 kv peak now how to determine 75 kv key peak very easy see here 1 kb dc 1.64 kb peak impulse so i need 75 kb here 75 kb impulse i need accordingly the kilovolt dc is adjusted but the problem lies elsewhere again there will be a correction factor what will be 75 kb in lab condition I will have to with test for positive impulse and negative impulse. Again, I recapitulate how to get positive impulse by reversing the diodes. Diode will charge capacitor with positive polarity. Diode will char charge the capacitors with negative polarity. So that I get both polarity voltage as and when required. Now 75, what will be 75? Now comes the correction factors. 731 has different set of correction. First, you will find air density D with the help of barometric pressure and dry temperature. Okay, everything is written here. From D, K you will be find uh, you will find K. The values of K is corresponding to factor D are given below. Now in lab, what will happen? You will have to apply your manipulation how how it is manipulated see if it is in the range of 0.95 to 1.05 look it carefully 0.95 to 1.05 the values are same so that in this range suppose it is 0.97 you will just write 0.97 here okay in this range in other range if you see it is in the range of 0 0.70, it is 2 more, 0 0.72. In this way, you will have to manipulate and write a factor. Just your manipulation, nothing critical. Now, from dry and wet temperature, what we will get? Absolute humidity. Now, here, another curve is there in 731 where absolute humidity and correction factor H will be for positive impulse and negative impulse because there are three curves. One is power frequency, one is positive impulse, one is negative impulse. So H plus will be for positive impulse and H minus will be the for negative impulse. I will just show you, see how it is calculated and you see that the curve ends here, we can extrapolate this line. We can extrapolate this line and find H minus and H plus. This is the curve of positive impulse, curve B and curve C is the negative impulse. So that the curve C cuts here and curve B cuts here. All are shown in the graph. So that you have two different values. So H plus and H minus is obtained. As soon as you get these two values, then you have U minus and U plus with the help of this formula, U minus and U plus. This is 75 absolute into K by H minus. What is K? This K. This K this k divided by h minus for negative impulse this for positive impulse okay so accordingly we will get two values here it is also given example that u minus is 81 kvp and u plus is positive you need 82.9 kv peak to be withstood to withstand by the insulator and for negative impulse if it withstands 81 kv peak it is sufficient okay so we will start the impulse generator either positive or negative for positive we will test with 82.9 kv peak and u minus will be 
1 kV peak. Now, how it is done? DC, did you remember that 1 kV equal to x kV of impulse? So, for 81 kV peak of impulse, how much DC is required? What we will do? We will increase the variac so that the meter goes to that kV of DC, XYZ. We will push the trigger and test. But this time we will remove the sphere gap. Now the actual insulator is tested. How it is tested? See, five such impulse voltage at same voltage will be applied separately for positive and negative. If there is more than one flashover, it will fail. But if only one flashover occurs, new series of 10 impulse will be given. The insulator shall be considered to have passed the test only if during this new series of tests there is no flashover or puncture. This is the testing procedure. First I will apply 5 positive, no puncture uh, or flashover occurs, pass the test. Then I will apply four, 5 negative, no puncture or flashover occurs, the insulator passes the test. If he, more than one flashover or puncture occur, occurs, immediately fail. But if only one flashover or puncture occurs, only one, then again we will test with 10 impulse. Okay. So here it is given that set at 41.1 kV DC. Why? Because from unitary method we need some voltage that is set here with the help of variac and trigger will be pushed for five times. So insulator must withstand the test. Next, the second run is 50% impulse versus our test. What is that? See. The impulse, the company requires that the impulse should withstand 75 kV peak or after correction say 81 kV peak. But how do you know that when the impulse will fail, uh, when the insulator will fail, if it withstand 82 kV, what is the voltage? Here it was given. Suppose it withstands 82.9 kV peak, but flashover occurs at 84 kV peak. The margin is too less. I cannot have insulator with this small margin. Is it clear? The margin shall be more. For that, it should be tested when flashover will occur. How it is tested? Again, for 50% impulse flashover test, what happens slowly we will increase the DC charging voltage and determine the voltage at which 50% flashover occurs. See here, what we will do, withstand test is done. Next, 41.1 kV was there. Now we will say 43 kV. We will apply four times short. If no flashover occurs, then 45 kV. In this way, we will increase this DC voltage slowly and we will push the trigger four times. If in this four times, two times flashover occurs and two times the insulator withstands, that is the point of DC when 50% flashover has occurred. We will go on increasing and pressing four times and test. Say 41 kV pressing four times, 43 kV pressing four times, 45 kV each time. The meter will be at 45 kV, we will press the trigger. In this way, four times it's tested at 45 kV, in this way. Now what happens? There will be a point when two times flashover will occur. And two times withstand. Maybe first two flashover, next two nothing will happen. Maybe first and third flashover will occur. Maybe last two flashover will occur. Maybe first and last flashover may occur. Whatever that DC voltage we will note, okay. See, let this is be 60 kV DC. Then corresponding positive impulse voltage is 1.64 into 60. Why? 
because it is tested at for uh, uh, it is tested at uh, positive voltage so measured voltage we will have to bring at stp reverse now it is tested at lab condition and we will report at stp how it is done 98.4 into multiply uh, divided by k this is k and multiplied by h plus why h plus because of the voltage is tested at positive if the voltage is tested at negative we will multiply by h minus okay this multiplication factor is already determined this is the 1.64 1 kv dc equivalent to x kv of impulse so just by multiplying you will get the 98.4 kv peak if you see the slide again, if you have forgot, I will show you again. This one, 1 kb DC equivalent to 1.64 kb impulse. You have already obtained this value. This That is why 1.64 comes there. That is why 1.64 comes here. So we will convert to STP by this formula. Now, since we have done this, how to prepare this instruction sheet? See, it is also given to you. You will get this from your friend. I have sent the file to Sue Smith. Okay, you will get from your CR. This is the instruction. Can you see it? This will be your cover page, experiment title, etc. First, you will write the objective of the experiment. Okay, these two. Next, you will give the apparatus table. Table is given here. Next, draw the diagram of the experimental setup. From IS 1876, you will determine the relative delta K, etc. And from this chart, this you will get. Okay. Now, for example, DC meter reading here it is given 26 kb, it may be 27, 24, 25, whatever. So you will give the tick and cross sequence here. And from here, you will get 1 kV DC equal to X kV impulse. You will write. Now you will find delta and K, etc. Then H plus and H minus from this curve. Now you will calculate U minus and U plus. Step by step, everything is given. For negative impulse voltage, value of DC charging voltage is X kV DC. For positive, it will be Y kV DC. This is the withstand. Then give the DC voltage for 50%, DC meter reading 60 kV. Now reverse. This is the 50% flashover voltage. And for reverse, you will get the DC charging voltage as u0 equal to u plus into h plus by k suppose for positive you have tested you will convert to u0 with the help of this reverse formula h plus you have obtained k you know and u plus means the positive voltage actually that you have obtained okay now this all about this first experiment if, if you have any question, please feel free to ask. If you have any confusion, I can clarify that. Kono samasya thakle bolte paro. 
যদি কোনো ক্লেরিফিকেশন দরকার হয় কারণ এই পুরো জিনিসটা পড়ে আসতে হবে ল্যাবে না পড়ে আসলে পরে যেটা হবে কিছুই বুঝতে পারবে না কত কোনো ফ্ল্যাশ ওভার দেখে চলে যাবে কোনো জায়গা আছে যে তোমাদের একটু বুঝতে অসুবিধা হয়েছে বা বলতে হবে সবাই বুঝতে পেরেছ শুনতে পাচ্ছি না আরেকবার বলবে শুনতে পাচ্ছি না সেম এক্সপেরিমেন্টটা কত অব্দি ছিল ইম্পালসের ক্যালিব্রেশন অব্দি ছিল বুঝলে এই ক্যালিব্রেশনের পরে যে এক্সট্রা ইনসুলেটারের ফ্ল্যাশ ওভার আর ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট ইনসুলেটার উইথ স্ট্যান্ডার ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট ফ্ল্যাশ ওভার ওই অংশটুকু ছিল না এটার সাথে ওটা অ্যাড হলো এসে বুঝতে পারলে ওই জন্যই তো রিক্যাপিচুলেশন বলা হয়েছে যে রিক্যাপ করা তো আশা করি সবাই বুঝতে পেরেছ কারো যখন কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন নেই এই ইনস্ট্রাকশন শিটটা আর এই পিপিটিটা সুস্মিতের কাছ থেকে সবাই জোগাড় করে নিও এই জিনিসটা সঙ্গে নিয়ে ল্যাবে আসতে হবে বুঝেছ তাহলে ওটা দেখে দেখে করতে পারবে না হলে কিছুই করতে পারবে না ঠিক আছে তাহলে আপাতত এই অব্দি রইল যদি যদি কারো কোনো কনফিউশন থাকে বা অসুবিধা হয় এখনো বলতে পারো বা না হলে ফোন করতে পারো আমাকে পরে ফোনে জিজ্ঞেস করতে পারো ক্লাসে গেলে ক্লাসে জিজ্ঞেস করতে পারো সামনের সপ্তাহ থেকে বৃহস্পতিবার বোধ হয় দুপুরবেলা তোমাদের এক্সপেরিমেন্টটা থাকবে আড়াইটে থেকে কেমন ওকে স্যার ঠিক আছে তাহলে এখন ছুটি আর কি আর একটা এক্সপেরিমেন্ট বোঝাতে হবে সেটা তোমরা একটা ওরকম আমাকে নেক্সট উইকে তো ক্লাস চালু আছে ওই রাত্রের দিকে যদি একটা দিন একটু আসতে পারো তাহলে সেটা বুঝিয়ে দেবো দুটো এক্সপেরিমেন্ট আছে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে তাহলে আমি যাচ্ছি